In what other aviation show does this happen halfway through the interview? Join us now for part one of a chat that proves the personal flying pod isn't science fiction, it's already here. Well, the Jetsons inspired it. Muller International, for example, have tried to do it, but no one has quite come up with the personal flying pod yet. But is it perhaps an issue that we're just not looking right in front of our eyes? I want to introduce John Snyder now, who is a United Airlines pilot, but also a massive fan of helicopters. Live from Indiana. Good evening. Well, good afternoon to you, John. How are you? I'm great. Look, tell us, look, I can see a little helicopter behind you, which looks to me like a flying pod, a sort of Jetsons type pod. But before we talk about that particular one, what is it about helicopters? You're, a, you're an airline pilot after all. Yeah, you know, my dad had a, a Schweitzer 300C when I was a kid. And uh, I was, I guess, about 11 years old. We lived out on the farm and he taught me how to fly the thing and we kept it in the backyard. And, and uh, that was just uh, the most fun anyone could ever have flying. And so I've kind of been a helicopter and, and rotorcraft guy ever since. But what was it? Why did you end up as a fixed wing airline pilot then? You could have gone on to be a helicopter pilot. Uh, well, unfortunately, um, commercial helicopter uh, pilots, there's not many jobs uh, in that industry right here in my area, and I kind of wanted to live here in southern Indiana where I grew up, and uh, so with the airline job, I can just to commute to Chicago uh, out of Evansville, Indiana, and it allows me pretty well to live wherever I want to. So do you commute to work in your helicopter? No, I don't take the helicopter. I drive, oh. a, drive a car to Evansville and get on a uh, regional jet to uh, Chicago. Look, give us some performance figures because I always love to look at this. You know, helicopters scare me at times because they take so much more fuel than fixed wing aircraft. But what's it like with that? Because it is so light, it must be better. Well, it is. Uh, that's that's a beauty of the Mosquito. I mean, the the gross weight is about 610 pounds, and so it's a very light helicopter. Uh, burns about five gallons of fuel per hour, and you're going to cruise around about 75 miles an hour, even with floats on. So you're actually getting, okay, it's probably a third slower, but you're actually getting light sport aircraft performance out of a helicopter here, aren't you? Pretty close, yes we are. That's really good. Okay, what about the price? What about how, and, and how do you purchase them? Are they kits or are they factory built aircraft? Well, they can be either way. Uh, if you're going to do it as an experimental home built with an end number, then uh, obviously it has to be kit built uh, by the builder. Um, if, however, it's uh, done as an ultralight, which this helicopter can qualify as a float equipped ultralight, um, mm -hmm. In that case, you can buy it turnkey from the factory ready to fly. And how much would you pay for one of those? Uh, for the turnkey ready to fly machine uh, is about $37,500 plus whatever options that you put on it. So you know, we often on, on this program look at aircraft which start off at $200,000 plus, And that's before you've even turned the key to start the engine. And here you've got something which is not much more expensive than a pretty good car and it's using the same sort of fuel as a light sport aircraft now that is seriously impressive when people say flying's too expensive to do that's amazing yeah this little helicopter is you really get a lot for your money i mean you know most helicopters are starting at uh, at well over two hundred thousand dollars more like 250 to 300 and here you can you can buy this kit and build it yourself for thirty thousand dollars and then the operating cost of it is about thirty dollars per hour you've got roughly ten dollars an hour involved in replacement components and uh... you know based on whatever fuels costing it's burning five gallon an hour but roughly twenty dollars an hour for the gas will will cover it and uh... It, it's just it has a very low acquisition cost and a very low operating cost. What is it like though when you get in it the first time? Because when you normally do a, a type rating for any kind of aircraft, 
You get in there with the instructor who sits alongside you and, you know, holds your hand. You get in that thing, there's only one seat. What's it like? <laughs> well, you know, one of the, another fortunate thing about the Mosquito is that it's just, a, it's, as far as helicopters go, it's a very easy little helicopter to fly. Um, it's, it's extremely stable. And so if you have gotten training in a Schweitzer 300 or a Robinson R22, or, or even probably if you've uh, you know gotten training in just about any single engine light piston helicopter, uh, you know they all fly quite similar. Uh, you need to of course be up to a very comfortable solo point in your training helicopter. And then when you get in this thing, you know you just you take it real easy, pick it up very slowly and easily. Possibly some guys even tether the thing down for the first uh, try or two, but uh, you know most anybody that can that is comfortable at soloing a, a light single engine piston driven helicopter is going to be able yeah. to get right into this and pick it right up. Um, you mentioned the word Robinson there, and obviously all credit to them for uh, bringing helicopters back to a mass appeal. But why would you get the Mosquito over something like the R-22? Well, probably mostly for acquisition and operating cost. I mean, obviously you only have one seat here, but I found that about the whole time I owned uh, two and three place helicopters, it seemed like 75 to 85 percent of the time that I was going out to fly, especially just for recreation, uh, I was by myself anyway. Um, because, you know, you get home, you want to go out and fly, and your friends are still working, or, or something. People have lots going on, and lots of times when you want to go fly, there's just nobody to go with you, and so I was always operating single seat. And so this just fits the bill great, because the uh, initial acquisition cost is, is, you know, 10 to 20 percent of what it is for uh, a Robinson, and likewise with the operating cost. What would people mostly use it for? Obviously fun, but could you use it for commuting to work? Oh, it's possible. Uh, you know, I don't think someone's going to start uh, using it to commute from suburbia to, you know, some downtown office job. That's just simply not going to happen. But if you lived out in a rural area like I do, and, you know, let's say you worked at, at some uh, farm operation or rural co-op or something like that, it would be very feasible to commute to work with. Uh, it, it certainly just depends on the situation, where you live, what type of airspace you have around you, and things like that. But, I, you know, I have to say that a Mosquito is, is very much a, a recreational helicopter to just go out and, and, you know, fly on the Saturdays and Sundays and the evenings and things like that to just go out and, and play around. Uh, certainly you're not going to start taking long trips with it because you barely have enough room in there for anything other than maybe a, a shave kit and a laptop. But uh, as far as just a personal fly around, have fun type machine, you know, I suppose it would be the equivalent of having a, a Harley Davidson or something. You can probably take just about as much with you. So it's basically a good excuse for using something to visit the relatives if you haven't seen them recently. Get in there and out quick. You can just drop in, uh, drop in on your friends and your family, and the beauty of it is you don't have to give them all a ride. <laughs> I love it.